Auguste Rodin was born in Paris in 1840 and died in 1917. He was a famous French sculptor known for creating the Age of Bronze in 1877, the Gates of Hell in 1880, The Kiss in 1889, The Thinker in 1902, among several other works of art. Unlike many famous artists in this world, Rodin didn't establish a credible list of work until he was in his 40s, despite being a very talented and upcoming artist of his generation. Several years went by without the recognition he needs, causing Rodin to enter a different career. He worked as a decorative bricklayer for nearly two decades when a trip to Italy provided him the inspiration he needed. Soon after returning to Paris, he sculpted his first piece, The Vanquished, later renamed The Age of Bronze. The Age of Bronze is a life-size bronze statue of a nude male measuring 72 inches. Rodin continued to produce casts of the statue for several decades after it was first created in 1876. The Gates of Hell is a monumental sculpture work that depicts the scene from the Inferno. The sculpture was commissioned by the Director of Fine Arts in 1880 and was meant to be delivered in 1885. Rodin will continue to work on and off on this project for 37 years until his death in 1917. The Kiss is another work of art that's very important as it depicts a 13th century Italian noblewoman in Dante's Inferno, who falls in love with her husband, Giovanni's younger brother, Paolo. Falling in love with the story of Lancelot and Guinevere, the couple are discovered and killed by Franciscus' husband. In the sculpture, the book can be seen in Paolo's hand. The lover's lips do not actually touch in the sculpture, suggesting they were interrupted and met their demise without their lips ever having touched. The thinker was entitled The Poet. He represented Dante, author of the Divine Comedy, which had inspired the gates, leaning forward to observe the circles of hell while meditating on his work. The thinker was therefore initially both a being with a tortured body, almost a damned soul, and a free-thinking man, determined to, to transcend his suffering through poetry. While remaining in place on the monumental gates of hell, the thinker was exhibited individually in 1888 and thus became an independent work. Enlarged in 1904, its colossal version proved even more popular. This image of a man lost in thought, but whose powerful body suggests a great capacity for action has become one of the most celebrated sculptures ever known. Rodin drew inspiration from Donatello, who was also a Renaissance sculptor. He inspired many of his works such as The Age of Bronze and St. John the Baptist Preaching. 
The Neo-Florentines used subtle modeling to portray a sense of life, and this resulted in accurate interpretations in bronze. This technique was obvious in Rodin's work throughout the 1880s. August Rodin was inspired by a number of artists and places during his travels around Europe. The artist's enjoyment of literary work can also be seen in a number of his works, as can a sometimes obsessive interest in history, which led to many of his pieces being created time and time again over a number of years. Another inspiration for his work was The Flowers of Evil, which was a controversial yet popular book in Paris around 1857. The Flowers of Evil is a volume of French poetry by Charles Baudelaire, first published in 1857. It was an important in the symbolist and modernist movements. The poems deal with themes relating to decadence and eroticism. This was the first edition of The Flowers of Evil, contained a hundred poems written in the 1840s and 1850s. While living in Brussels, Baudelaire and his publisher decided to put out this collection of scraps containing a miscellany of poems. Most important, it included the six poems censored from the first edition of The Flowers of Evil, which were illegal to publish in France until the 1940s. Another influence Rodin had was Michelangelo. Rodin drew inspiration for the Age of Bronze from Michelangelo's Dying Slave, which he had studied at the Louvre. He admired Michelangelo's depiction of the human form and attempted to combine this with his own ideas on human nature. Throughout his career, Rodin was compared to Michelangelo on several occasions. Although he never married, his long-term partner was Rose Beret, and the couple had one son together. Although Rodin stayed with Rose, it was during this period of his life that he embarked on an intense relationship with a young sculptor named Camille Claudel. Both artists were heavily influenced by the other and carried on their relationship until Claudel broke it off in 1898, after realizing Rodin would never leave Rose. The Franco-Prussian War, often referred to in France as the War of 1870, was a conflict between the Second French Empire and the German Stats, the North German Confederation, led by the Kingdom of Prussia. The conflict centered on Prussians' ambitions to extend German unification. Prussian Chancellor Otto von Bismarck planned to provoke a French attack in order to draw the Southern German states Baden and Hesse into an alliance with the Prussian-dominated North German Confederation. In Russia, the old problem of succession reappeared. Officers who had been with the Russian forces occupying France had been exposed to the Enlightenment, and they hated what they had found when returning to Russia. Corruption, censorship, rigid control over higher education and serfdom. They disliked the military's resort to gross brutality in attempting to instill military discipline among soldiers. St. Petersburg's main square, around 3,000 of them tried to overthrow the government. They took no control of anything strategic and were supported by no general rising. Their actions became known as the Decemberist Rising, and they were crushed by forces loyal to Alexander's 29-year-old brother, Nicholas I. The reason I picked this artist was because I was 
familiar with his sculpture, The Thinker, and wanted to learn more about the artist who created it. His sculptures are somewhat emotional and very deep. I was very interested in the beginning in who inspired his art. After doing research on this artist, I am glad I chose Rodin because to me, he's not only an interesting individual, but his life is very powerful. I hope whoever is watching this is not judging an artist until they actually do their research first in advance. We live in a stereotypical society and we judge. We don't do it intentionally, but unintentionally judge before even knowing the person.